Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll take a look at all the changes in the second big patch update for RO 2.0. We'll have the continuation of the main quest, a new floor for Palace of Beauty, major adjustments for Oracle Mirror, Echoing Corridor, and Ancient Relics, a few changes that will affect Ninja and Assassin classes, and a number of quality of life optimizations and bug fixes. These will be implemented in the Sea and Global servers this week. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First up, we have optimizations for Lightning and Meteoric Chain. The Lightning Chain in the Event Merchant NPC has been removed and replaced with Meteoric Chain. We can now exchange two Lightning Chains for one Meteoric Chain, or we can also purchase the Meteoric Chain for 100,000 Zenny. In addition, majority of the rewards that give out Lightning Chain have been converted to Meteoric Chain instead. This shift to Meteoric Chain will significantly decrease farming time and boost farming efficiency especially for Alt Farmers. In addition, we now have an on-off switch option for Lightning and Meteoric Chain. This will allow us to pause our chain buff when we're just killing boss monsters so we just consume combat time at the normal rate. The weekly usage limit of Lightning Chain has been removed. Also, the cooldown for using Lightning or Meteoric Chains has been removed and we can now use them in batches. Notably, the Meteoric Chain can now be stored in shared storage. This is amazing for sharing resources with your alt characters. Up next, we have a major update to the Oracle Mirror system wherein we can now extract and activate defense attributes from equipment. The new extractable equipment for defense attributes are as follows. This means that we can now activate one attack attribute and one defense attribute at the same time. However, this update won't add a new free slot in the Oracle Mirror. So if you've already used up two free slots for attack extract, you'll need to either delete one or buy another slot using BCC for your defensive extract. Up next, we have new additional Eclodge quests that will become available in this update. First, we have the continuation of the main storyline quest in Eclodge. Adventurers who have reached base level 150 and have completed the second phase of the Oath of Light and Stars can now continue on to the third phase. Subsequently, after completing the third phase, the fourth phase will also become available. Second, we have two new minstrel quests in Eclodge. Those who have reached base level 150 can go to sell the Halar NPC in Eclodge to receive the minstrel quest Star Bridge and Mission and Origin of Pixies. Third and last is addition of two new Singer Master Box missions in Eclodge. We can now work on getting the new wing rewards which are the Floating Light Feather and Elf Guardian Wings. Up next, we have plenty of adjustments in Echoing Corridor which will make it easier to clear. First, for room adjustment, the machine room has been removed and replaced with a tarot room. In this new room, three tarot cards are randomly refreshed each time. You may spend gold coins to refresh the deck. After confirming the deck, you'll get to draw one card randomly from the chosen deck. You can spend gold coins to draw again, but it will not include the cards you've discarded. The effects of the tarot cards include a combat card where you can fight a monster to obtain the key, a cost card where you can accept the debuff effect in exchange for the key, or an item card where you'll get powerful tarot items. Second, the room mechanism in boss monster rooms has been removed and replaced with a set of monsters with affixes. Third, speaking of monster affixes, we have the following adjustments to the affix effect of monsters in the boss and normal monster rooms. Fourth, the exit room location will now be displayed by default. And fifth, the Holy Spring Shadow is added in the restroom wherein you can refill stacks in the Holy Bottle. This is a new item that can store up to 3 stacks of healing wherein each stack can restore 30% of your max HP and max SP. Next for item and gold coin adjustment, we have the following. First is the removal of these not so useful items from the shop. If you have these items in your archive, it will be replaced with gold coins of equal value. Second, the initial items now include free osteoacusis chips and the new item Holy Bottle. Third, the effects of the following items have been enhanced. And fourth, the initial gold coins received after entering these floors have been adjusted. 
Up next, the second floor of Palace of Beauty has been opened. After completing all the treasure chest rewards in the first floor, you may now go to Blooming Land and interact with the Gate of Alfheim to activate the quest Explore the Palace of Beauty. Completing this quest will grant entry to the second floor, wherein you'll need to defeat the Craze Cover here. Do take note that after opening the second floor, you can no longer enter the first floor. In addition, an escape function has been included to avoid getting stuck in the puzzle rooms. Just click Brooke's avatar to use the escape function, which will send you to the initial point of the room. Up next, we have an update to the Ancient Relics system. First is the addition of four new pieces of Ancient Relics. Their effects are as follows. Second is the increase in cooldown of equipping Ancient Relics to 30 seconds. And third is the additional effect in the special attribute of the Elf's Piccolo Relic. Aside from setting the variable cast time to always zero, it will now have an additional effect of reducing the fixed cast time by 50%. This will be a really good relic for mage type class especially for ninjutsu magic build ninjas. Up next we have a number of adjustments which would mostly benefit the assassin class. First, the Chimera Star card effect has been adjusted from the previous Immune to Poison effect to the now Poison Resistance plus 100% and Poison Attack plus 50%. Aside from Assassins, Bards and Dancers may also benefit from this if they use the new Poison Element weapons. Second, the Assassin skill Poisonous Weapon has increased probability of poisoning from the previous 5% to the now 20%. Third and last, the Advanced Rune for Assassin's Soul Hunting Pack Star Rune will have an added effect, wherein using Soul Depravity will automatically cause the soul to return and cause additional damage. These adjustments would surely benefit the Assassin class, but will these be enough to bring back the glory of the Assassin class? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Up next, we have the following skill adjustments. First, there is now an auto skill bar switching function available at base level 121. This will definitely come in handy for switching between auto farming and auto MVP rotation skills. Second, we have changes to the skills used by ninja clones. Previously, ninja clones will use all skills that have been learned, but now they will only use skills placed in the auto and manual skill bar. It is a much needed change to optimize the damage of ninja clones. Third is addition of a skill range indicator circle for displacement type skills such as Chronomancer's Wormhole, Slayer's Bifisa Bring, and a God Dagger Artifact skill. This will allow them to accurately determine the teleport location. Fourth and last, Slayers can no longer use Bifisa Bring and the related Combound Magic skill in Echoing Corridor. Up next, adventurers playing in the new servers will have a buff inside the Thanatos Tower dungeon. The buff will grant plus 20,000 max HP, plus 20% max HP, plus 1,200 physical and magic attack, and plus 20% physical and magic penetration. This is a good buff to help players in the new servers enjoy and complete the dungeon faster, especially since the servers are quite fresh and most of the players are still undergeared. Up next, we have the addition of god weapons for Ninja and Doram, which are now showcased in the Guild Artifact Room. The Shuriken God Artifact for Ninjas has the following stats and effects, and it can be crafted using the following materials. Your guild can get the Shuriken Artifact Shard by exchanging Pantera 1 or Pantera 3 Artifact Tokens, so your guild must occupy either Valkyrie 1 or Free Castle in GVG to be able to get the materials for crafting the new God Shuriken weapon. On the other hand, the Foxtail God Artifact for Dorams has the following stats and effects, and it can be crafted using the following materials. Your guild can get a Foxtail Artifact Shard from either Geffen 1 or Geffen 3 Artifact Tokens, so your guild must occupy either Britannia 1 or Free Castle in GVG to be able to get the materials for crafting the new God Foxtail weapon. Up next, we have optimizations related to GVG battles. First, Imperium will now be affected by Safety Wall and Light Shield in War of Imperium and War of Crystal. In addition, the bug wherein the Imperium could be affected by Fate Prey has been fixed. And second, if a player goes offline and then goes online when inside GVG maps, he or she will be sent to the entrance of the dungeon. Up next, the item in the Adventure Coin and Frey Coin shops have been updated. 
the gold four-wing Valkyrie can now be purchased in the Adventure coin shop worth 500 Adventure coins. While a special two-person mount called Pop of the Snail has been added in the Frey coin shop. It's available for purchase using a whopping 888 Frey coins. And lastly, we have a number of minor adjustments and optimizations. First, Scriptura Academy has been adjusted to a shared channel, wherein you can see adventures from different channels on the same server, just like how it is in the main cities. Second, we can now refine equipment directly to plus 4 with just a push of a button. Third, we can now cook and taste dishes directly from the Adventure Handbook. Fourth, the purple material drop for the MVP Seed of Idrisil and Soul Player has been switched. Seed of Idrisil will now drop Floating Dream Quantum, while Soul Player will now drop Colorless Tear. Fifth, the daily limit for Magic Gear Fuel will obtained by the Blacksmith class is now increased from 1,800 to 2,000. In addition, there is no longer a storage limit for it. Six, pet EXP potions can now be synthesized in batches. Seventh and last, we have optimizations for Prepare for Elite. Now we can save the list of skills in Prepare for Elite in the Ymir's notebook and view the skills through the Ymir's and also through the multi-class panel. Alright, so far we've gone through all the big changes coming in the second major patch update for RO 2.0. This is based on the patch notes release in the C and Global servers. Note that there are a number of bug fixes excluded in this video for brevity. If you'd like to see the complete patch notes, I'll have it linked down below. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.